Hello everybody. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly go through how our atmosphere evolved. So what do I mean by our, how our atmosphere evolved over time? Um, so the Earth wasn't always like this. If I got into a time machine now, went back 4.6 billion years, as you knew, uh, and I opened the door and stepped out, oh, I'd be gone, straight away, gone. Because our atmosphere would not have supported life. Why? Because there was no oxygen. It was an insanely hot place, lots of volcanoes, lots of carbon dioxide, methane, um, ammonia, all of these things being pumped into our atmosphere. You know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Um, so again, insanely hot place, so lots of carbon dioxide at this stage. Over time, lots of time, we're talking billion, billions of years, the Earth began to cool down. As this happened, uh, there were lots of water vapour uh, in the atmosphere, again, that was trapping heat, because water is, vapour is also a greenhouse gas, um, that condensed this water. So you think about how much water there is in all of the oceans on Earth. We're talking about a lot of water vapor here. And it condensed to form the oceans. When this happened, the carbon dioxide, um, lots of it dissolved into the ocean. So there's a dramatic drop in the level uh, of carbon dioxide, which was handy because some of the first life forms on Earth began to evolve, things like algae. Um, some photosynthetic bacteria, and I'm just giving you a great big clue there. So you've got lots of carbon dioxide, and you've got lots of water. What process uses carbon dioxide and water? Photosynthesis, of course, one of the most important processes, if not the most important process, uh, on the planet. And one of the products, sorry, I have to balance my equations. Carbon dioxide plus water makes glucose and oxygen. One of the key, sorry, battery running low. One of the key um, products, again, is oxygen. So the carbon dioxide levels fell even more because these life forms started to photosynthesize. So at the same time, where there was practically zero oxygen, the oxygen levels on Earth have started to, to creep up, again, in the oceans. So photosynthesis, a very important process, takes in carbon dioxide, locks that carbon up into glucose, so lots of plants in the ocean, things like that, were locked up, and then obviously things come along and eat those plants. So a lot of the carbon dioxide and the carbon that was locked in here, that was causing these really high temperatures on the Earth, uh, is now locked up in things like shells, um, lots of carbonates and crabs, things like that. So over time, water condensed from the oceans, photosynthesis happened, all that carbon dioxide being taken in, oxygen levels on the rise until we get to what we've got today. So our atmosphere today, is much nicer. Carbon dioxide now uh, is about 0.04%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but remember carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and a massive impact in terms of trapping heat from the sun, uh, basically reflecting it back to the Earth's surface and stopping it from going out into space. Uh, oxygen levels, any, anyone want to have a guess? Oxygen is about 21% uh, on Earth. People usually think it's a lot higher. Nitrogen is 78%. So in this room right now, it's 78% nitrogen that I am breathing in through respiration. A bit more biology there. Okay, so argon. I think he's about 0.9%, percent i am wrong, pretty sure it is. Uh, and then you've got lots of noble gases, other noble gases, that make up the remainder. OK, 
Okay, so we're very, very interested in looking back on our Earth. We're also looking at other places. Things like, uh, there's a moon there, one of Jupiter's moons, Io, uh, that is basically covered in volcanoes that are pumping out lots of carbon dioxide. We're pretty, sure, we're pretty certain that that's what the Earth will have been like. Okay, so not a nice place in the beginning, our Earth. We do have to look after it. We've got to make the most of uh, being able to go outside and enjoy some fresh air. Because if we'd have gone back 4.6 billion years ago, that wouldn't have been happening. We wouldn't have lasted a second out there. Horrible place. So you've got your work to do on this. And the work does involve a little bit of a storyboard, which is a good way of doing this in terms of building these ideas together linking them together, tying it in with the idea of photosynthesis. Also looking at where the carbon goes. We'll do that in a little bit more detail when we look at the carbon cycle, um, which is literally looking at where carbon goes. Um, but just build on these ideas. Try the exam questions again that you've been set. Um, big, nice explanations, a six mark question. You'll be given some information, you might be given a graph similar to this, but obviously a bit prettier than mine. And you'll be asked to explain what processes are happening, what's happened to change the atmosphere. Remember, water condensed to form the oceans, what's photosynthesis, what does that do, what product does it make that's very useful, that change the composition of our atmosphere. Very interested in looking in, or well, very interested in uh, ways of colonising Mars. I had some amazing discussions in science clubs with pupils about this, you know, um, terraforming, putting plants on Mars, would that help? There's quite a lot of carbon dioxide on Mars. Um, get your thinking caps on here. Um, think outside of the box as well, because that's what science is about, asking questions. Okay, thank you everybody.